All right, everyone, let's continue with learning the different kinds of prayers. Uh, which are the kinds of prayers we've learned so far? OK. Receiving, OK. On, OK. I'm hearing one word here, there. Very good. What else? OK, consecration. So all the different types have been covered. There are more categories of prayers. We'll study that. The next one is prayer of agreement. Prayer of agreement. As the name suggests, it has to do with people agreeing on something together. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19. Can someone read it aloud? Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on it concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Okay, wonderful. So Jesus is saying that there are certain matters where it may be helpful for people to pray together in agreement. Now, what to do if there is nobody for us to agree with? It's okay to pray alone. In case we don't have anyone to pray with at that point in time, we can pray alone. But there is something special about praying with someone, you know, another person agreeing with them on a certain matter. So prayer of agreement. Could you please read that again? That was again. I say uh, to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Praise God. So, whenever there is an opportunity to pray with someone, what is the important element there? Louder. Agreement. Agreement. Just praying together is different from praying together in agreement. When we pray in agreement, my father will do it. He will do it. Prayer of agreement is very powerful. It's so very powerful. So whenever there are opportunities for us like this, we can pray with someone. I know people have like prayer partners somebody in the life group that they are praying with, uh, or even you know at home if it, it's just a, a husband and wife, two people praying together. How many do you need for the father to answer prayer? How many people do you need for agreement? Only two. Even if two people are praying, let's say just the husband and wife, they are agreeing and praying, it's very powerful. Very, very powerful. So that's what Jesus is saying. There are times where we can pray with someone. And uh, in agreement, that will become a powerful prayer. There will be an answer to that prayer. In the book of Acts, we read about the early church believers. They come together. And this there is this one word which is repeated. There are references in our notes. Um, Acts 1, 14, Acts 2, 1. Acts 4.24, it says, the people prayed in one accord. One accord. One accord, in other words, is just agreement. So when we pray with a united heart, is it possible for a lot of people to be here but not be united in the heart? Yes, that can happen also. So more than the number of people who are gathered, the agreement of our hearts matters. So when we all agree, when we are all believing together, and we are saying, God, do this for us, he will do it. That is how the early church believers prayed. They believed together. And that is powerful. So I remember this one particular uh, instance. This was long ago. And uh, you know, one uh, auntie, she called me up. And one of her family members had gone for a checkup. And there was a report. And the report said that 
um, this person has a certain kind of uh, cancer. Yeah. So she was so uh, shaken by it. She just called me up. She's like, Pastor, we got this report. Um, please, pray, please pray for us. We have many more tests to be done. We need your prayers. So normally, you know, I would pray on the phone and maybe even um, whenever possible, right? Like we connect with them and continue to pray to see healing uh, for that person. But that day, I still remember that day very clearly. I got the phone call and it was as if the Holy Spirit was saying, why don't you pray a prayer of agreement? Okay, So I told her, I said, uh, if you don't mind, can we pray together now? And I want you to agree with me agree with me and the words just came out of my mouth it's not me i'm for sure because it just it was just coming i said agree with me that the report will change i'm not the kind who would say something like that it's so strange to say something like that but i said it agree with me that the report will change and i'm not recommending that you do this also okay it just happened the way the holy spirit works in different times is different when we are sensitive to him that day it was like that. So I told her, agree with me for the report to change. And we prayed. It was hardly one minute prayer. Quickly, we just prayed. Lord, we agree together. And we ask for this report to change. We command healing over this person's body, all that. In the next couple of weeks, they went to two, three different hospitals. They tested everything. And they came up with the conclusion that whatever report was given earlier was not correct. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I was shocked myself. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Later on, you know, you kind of go back and you think, what did I say? Why did I say like that? Should I have said, you know? But it was the spirit of God for sure. I have nothing to claim in this. But she called back saying, you will be thrilled to hear this. The report has changed. He does not require any treatment, anything. We just have to, you know, like sort of keep going for reviews every now and then. And so they're still continuing for the reviews. There are no treatment as such. Right? It uh, changed into some other report that actually does not require therapy. So even for me, it's a learning experience. It built my faith so powerfully. And that day, it, it was like a revelation about the prayer of agreement. Why did God say that? Why did the Holy Spirit prompt for agreement in prayer? So simple. One minute, hardly, we prayed together. You know, nothing so loud about the prayer or nothing. Just a prayer of agreement. And something changed for somebody's uh, life, their health, their family. Okay, So I learned a lesson about the power of the prayer of agreement. We can't take it lightly. Okay, and many of the revivals, we will study about revivals um, as we continue our uh, courses. When we learn about revivals, usually there are many, many people praying together. That's when the revivals actually took place. Okay, So look at this. People with one heart seeking the Lord and saying, God, do this for us. And mighty revivals have taken place across the world. So that is important for us to pray together in agreement. If we are saying, I don't know anybody, I don't know too many people, I don't uh, you know, have uh, people with me right now, don't worry. Just one more person, one other person with you whenever possible. But in case uh, you don't even have that one person to agree with you, no problem. You pray. Our prayers are still powerful. Okay, But there are times when the prayer of agreement is very powerful and we can engage in such prayer. Now coming to prayer in the spirit. Prayer in the spirit is nothing but praying in tongues. We are going to look at a few scriptures and um, get a basic understanding about prayer in the spirit. There is an entire chapter on that. So we'll go to it later on. For now, just some simple understanding about what is this kind of prayer. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 
first let's read verse 2 for who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to god for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries wonderful so he who speaks in a tongue speaks to whom to god no one understands him so when we are speaking in tongues people around us generally they can't understand they don't know the, what are you talking i can't understand but our prayer is being understood by whom god so what is tongues then tongues is talking to god what is talking to god prayer isn't it that is prayer so tongues is a prayer language we are directly talking to god okay so we are talking to god nobody understands it and he says we are speaking mysteries unto god so this is what tongues is all about mysteries meaning we don't understand what we are saying so when we are praying in tongues if you feel what am i saying i can't understand it don't worry because obviously we cannot understand it but who understands it god understands it that's enough god understands it that is praying in tongues second verse second section verse 15 to 17 could somebody read that please what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit and i'll also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit and i will also sing with the understanding otherwise if you bless with the spirit how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say for you indeed it give thanks well but the other is not indified okay so we can pray in tongues and we can also pray in a uh, unknown language so paul is calling that praying with understanding so which prayer should i pray should i pray in tongues because it's so powerful you're praying directly to god or should i pray in human language both are fine both are fine but of course tongues has its benefits and we will talk about those benefits later but both are applicable god is not saying you pray only in tongues don't pray in your natural language not necessary we can pray in both because paul is saying i pray in the spirit i also pray with my understanding i sing in the spirit i also sing with my understanding and when i'm praying with people he says if i pray in tongues how will they say amen because they can't understand what i'm saying so then human language is necessary when we are praying together okay so these are a few insights about tongues verse 28 First Corinthians fourteen verse twenty eight. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay, so this is about tongues as a message. So if uh, there are categories of tongues, the tongues that we are speaking about, it is the personal prayer language, and we speak to God, and we don't understand it, but God understands it. okay so the other tongues that he just mentioned if they want to speak to the people they need an interpreter that is tongues as a message that's another category so we are not discussing about that tongues we are talking about tongues as a prayer language so here's the point this is also a way to pray tongues and so in our prayer time we can have some part given only to tongues and in fact you know tongues is a, a beautiful privilege that we don't only have to take time to pray when it's our prayer time we can pray any time in tongues okay so any time we, we are walking we can pray in tongues we are driving we can pray in tongues we are cooking you know you can pray in tongues any time we can pray in tongues because we will learn later on that tongues does not really evolve our understanding that means i can concentrate on doing something 
without being affected even if i'm playing in tongues at the same time so i could be doing something very serious you know i could be working on an excel sheet i can still pray in tongues that's the kind of ability god has given us when it comes to praying in the spirit you can pray in the spirit all the time all the time paul talks about it in the writing to the thessalonians he says pray without ceasing so you and i have a privilege what is that privilege we can pray in tongues at all times it need not even be interrupted at any point keep praying keep praying we don't have to be loud we can even sort of pray under our breath nobody will know right at your workplace we are working we are on the computer now we may be writing code but we are praying in tongues it's possible it's very much possible so god has given us a privilege of praying in the spirit it's very very powerful it's very powerful we will look at all the benefits of praying in the spirit but this is another category either uh, we we can assign time for praying in the spirit during our daily prayer and extra at all times we could be praying in tongues any questions about tongues at this point no okay fine then we shall move on so apart from prayer in the spirit we will look at prayer of repentance or confession 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 through 9 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 through 9 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship of one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleaneth us from all sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins to cleanse us from all unrighteousness okay thank you all right so um apostle john here he is helping us understand the value of confession if we confess our sins to the lord he is able to forgive us so are there are there is there a need to ask god for forgiveness as a believer yes there is there is we have a new life in jesus christ but at the same time you know every day uh we can see things in our lives that need to change and so when the holy spirit convicts us we can go to him in prayer and confess those sins and what did we just read in that passage if we confess our sins then god is faithful and just he will forgive us he'll remove those things from us as far as the east is from the west and so in the prayer time it's good to take time to confess those things that are heavy in our hearts um it could be things about you know what we have spoken we may feel oh uh-huh, why did i say that i should not have said that or it could be something about some decisions that we made why did i make that choice god that was not right you didn't want me to make that choice or it could be about our behavior you know the way we uh, behave with people or our attitude or the way we come across you know express ourselves um, that may be hurting somebody and the holy spirit is convicting us and saying you need to repent of these things or 
some of the attitudes that we have we've we've talked about uh, laying the axe to the root so we may find within ourselves some of those fleshly struggles there's pride there's jealousy there's lust uh, you know there's a self there are many things that may sort of come to the surface and we realize oh i still have roots of these things in my heart god i'm so sorry i repent of these things oh god now what if we don't confess to the lord something is wrong but we are not confessing to the lord yeah so we can't hear from him uh, is what divya is saying see it's like a good um healthy relationship now we have a healthy relationship with our i'm just taking for example you know our parents now if our parents say something don't do this okay and we did it what happens we are not able to see them eye to eye we were always running away you know we were always escaping because we actually did what they told us not to do and we've had that experience with others also you remember the time adam and eve god told them don't eat of this fruit they ate it now god is coming and he's looking he's calling out adam where are you hidden can't face god something has happened to the relationship it's not like before things are you know that there's a wall that has come in between because sin was committed and that freedom is now gone if we want to restore it back to the healthy relationship that it was one must break that wall how to break it repent to god okay come back to him and say okay god how do i restore my life how should i restore um uh, the right attitude help me lord i i will change i will make a you turn repentance what is repentance repentance is nothing but a uh, a turning around of our mind have you ever made a u turn while driving you're going in that direction right you're going in that direction you suddenly made a u turn you're going in the opposite direction that is repentance metanoia like change your mind i changed my mind from that direction to the other direction that is repentance true repentance true repentance is of the heart true repentance is deep true repentance will show but it's got to begin in prayer where we say god i recognize this is not right i'm sorry forgive me right that is confession repentance before the lord the psalmist he said this in psalm 32 and verse 3 okay the nkjv version he says when i kept silent my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long so he's saying lord when i know something is off and i'm hiding i'm hiding it from you it's as if you know my bones are growing old something is bottled up within me and it's eating me up so that is what happens when we don't repent so it's good to quickly repent whenever god brings something to our attention quickly quickly say oh okay god sorry i shouldn't have done that that's wrong i'm making a change move next right so uh, some time in prayer every day to check our hearts say holy spirit check my heart if there's anything that is against you anything sinful anything that does not glorify your name please bring it to my knowledge my attention i confess i repent and make a change so that is part of our everyday prayer and god helps us think about david you know he sinned before the lord um something morally very wrong in his life and yet when we read in the book of acts about david david a man after god's own heart what was so special about this person who sinned so badly repentance he came to the lord we have the psalms where this uh, he writes search me o god you know give me an undivided heart o god uh, if if there's anything in me which is not right please set it right o god so repentance and confession forms a huge part of 
uh, our prayer life as well. So we give time to it. So we've seen in this uh, second session, we said agreement, then praying in the spirit, repentance. Next, we come to prayer of unburdening. Unburdening. The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Cast means to take and throw. You know, if something is very heavy, um, like on a ship, if things are heavy and the ship is going to sink, what do they do? They'll just take those extra weights, throw it, just throw it. But in this case, we are taking our cares and it's like we're giving it to God. We're throwing it away from us, but we're giving it to God and we're saying, God, you deal with it. You help me in this situation. So that is unburdening. Those weights are unburdened from us. But now who has those weights? God has. And God can help us. So the prayer of unburdening is um, going before the Lord and pouring out our hearts. You know, Psalm 62 and verse 8. Could somebody read that please? It's there in our notes. End of page 21. Trust in, in him, him at, at all, all times. Time. You people pour out your heart before him. God is, is a refuge for us. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so it says, pour out your heart. It's possible that there are times in our lives when we really don't know what to pray. We are so confused. We come and we have the structure of prayer like, okay, I'll start with thanksgiving. Then I'll uh, pray for some time in the spirit. Then I will ask and, you know, receive from the Lord. But in those times, it's okay to pray prayers of pouring out our hearts. Have you read the Psalms? How does David talk? All over the place. Sometimes he's saying this and somewhere he's gone off to something else. And then he's coming back. He's just pouring out his heart. And he's saying, God, I can't understand what's happening. But I know you're listening to me. And I'm just pouring out my heart. So there are those moments. There are those seasons of our lives where we may not be able to stick to the structure. But we are saying, I'm just going to be myself before the Lord and pour out my heart to the Lord. It's unburdening, meaning the heaviness of our hearts is gone. And we receive rest from the Lord. Okay. So um, I remember this one season of uh, my life where, um, uh, uh, you know, th there were some things that were going on were very, very difficult. And at the same time, there was a church person who was diagnosed with cancer, a young lady. So it was really bothering me. It was really bothering me. And uh, I, I didn't know how to deal with it. Uh, it was too much to take at that point. And uh, it was hard to sleep also. So I would wake up very early in the morning like four-ish, just wake up. I only don't know what I'm praying. It, I'm just praying, 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 saying something, this, that, all over the place like David. But at the end of it all, like maybe an hour has gone by, an hour, hour and a half has gone by, I can experience God's peace, God's strength. And though things are not yet very clear, I've given off my burdens to the Lord. So in that particular time, this is how I functioned. There was no other way. Because if you go by your own mind, you can't. But just sit before the Lord, unburdened. Because the Lord cares for us. That's what it says. First Peter 5, 7. Cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Though we are not recognizing, you know, what's going on and how to even put it across. Thank God. He understands. Just be in his presence. Pour out your heart. Maybe that's the kind of prayer that works in some seasons. right? But it is powerful. It's powerful. If you're feeling so anxious, so confused, so lost, you don't know how to pray. Oh, what is this prayer and intercession course? Lord, it's too much. I can't handle it. No problem. Pray the prayer of unburdening. Just sit before the Lord. Anything, everything that comes to your mind, you say, Lord, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. 
we will experience God's peace. We will experience God's strength. So this is another um, special kind of prayer that we can pray. Coming to prayer of faith for healing. James chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Could one of us... Uh, is it, is huh? anyone among, of you, among, among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with, the, with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your repasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective prevent, prevent prayer of a righteous man avails much. All right. Thank you. So here we have an instruction regarding praying for somebody who is sick. So what does James say? He says, is anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up uh, and all of that. Okay. So if somebody is sick, call for the elders of the church, let them anoint with oil. So it's just uh, like an expression of releasing anointing over the sick person. But the important part that I want us to focus on today is verse 15. It says, the prayer of Dash will save the sick. What is that prayer? Faith. The prayer of faith will save the sick. So no matter who is praying, in this case, James is saying, call for the elders. But even if it is not the elders who are praying, what kind of prayer should we pray for the sick? Prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. So that's what we need. Every time we pray for someone who is sick, pray with faith. How can healing come? When the prayer is a prayer of faith, healing can come. If the prayer does not have faith, Will healing come? No, no. So that is what is the crucial part here. The prayer of faith will save the sick. So each time we pray for somebody who's sick, be conscious, be alert. When I'm praying, but am I believing that there will be healing? Okay, be healed in Jesus' name. Did I believe? Is it a prayer of faith or am I just saying it because that's how you're supposed to say it? You know, so prayer of faith will heal the sick. That's what we have been instructed. So always when we pray for healing, let's pray with faith. Now, if we don't have faith, what to do? There's good news. We can build it up. If you feel we don't have faith, spend time in the word of God that talks about healing. Read about all the healings that Jesus performed in his ministry. What will happen? Faith will come. Faith will rise. Faith will go up. If someone says, brother, I have this problem. Come and pray for me. Go, spend some time. Read all the scriptures, healing scriptures, two, three times. Then go pray for that person, if possible. Many, many a time what happens? We don't have time, right? You can't wait two days, three days and all. You saw them now. You have to pray for them right now then it's fine. Go ahead and pray. But if there is the luxury of time, spend time in the word. Build up the faith. And then you go pray for that person. Then what we're doing is James 5.15 Prayer of faith. It will save the sick. So for healing, one needs to pray with faith. Okay? Um, Okay, I'll share this uh, story right now. Uh, this happened also, I don't remember which year, and I don't remember the details as well, but there was this girl who came to church, and uh, soon after the church was over, she came for prayer, uh, and she said, I need healing in my body. I said, okay, fine, let's pray. And before I could pray, she said, Pastor, 
uh, but she just grabbed my hand. She said, but I want you to feel this. And she put my hand on her elbow. And that was like a, like a solid ball, like, you know, like a stony ball. And she said, see, this is the problem. There is a growth. And it is, a, it is a solid growth. And the doctors are saying, I need a biopsy. And it could be, it could be like, a, like a major issue. Uh, and, and at that point, I was like, oh, OK, you want healing with this? Uh, you know, because it seems to the human mind, it seems impossible. How can this be healed? But then I just prayed in the spirit for some time. I said, Lord, I need faith to pray for healing for this person. And she said, I, I'm struggling with this for, I don't remember right now, you know, weeks, months, but it's not going. And it's here. And I could feel it. It's like a solid ball. And uh, uh, at that time, I remembered, yeah, prayer of faith. OK, let's pray a prayer of faith. In, by faith in the name of Jesus, command this growth disappear in Jesus' mighty name. OK, again, it was hardly a minute, less than a minute, maybe, that much only. Prayer is over. I told her, you know what? Let me know. Let me know what happens. So she came back uh, roughly like two weeks later. And uh, I was happy to see her. But then I want to know what happened. What happened to that growth? And uh, she comes up to me after service. And she says, you will not believe this. I went to the, after you prayed, from that point, you know, little by little, little by little, it started shrinking. They took the biopsy also. And they said, it's nothing. It's gone. You, it, you don't have to worry about it. And it's disappeared. Amen. So, but the, le the lesson I learned is when you're praying for the sick, what does God want? Faith. Faith. Just depend on the Lord. Say, God, give me that faith. I need that faith right now. And I'm praying for the sick person, but I'm praying with faith. Amen. And it's amazing. It's amazing the things that God can do. There are so many testimonies that I can share with all of you. And it continues to amaze me till today because it's God at work. We have nothing to um, you know, boast about. But the prayer of faith will make the difference. Pray for the sick with faith. And there are lots of healing scriptures available that we can listen to, build ourselves up. Or if you're saying, I don't have access to all that, read about the life of Jesus, all the healings, the miracles of Jesus. It'll build up faith. And with that faith, pray for the sick people. So that is another kind of prayer that we can learn. Now we have two more categories left, which we will look at. Um, first one is the prayer of waiting, waiting. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. Yeah. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, and of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor and weary. He understand, uh, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Hmm. Even cool. the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew new, their strength. They shall mount up the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. OK, thank you. So we notice wait, the word wait there, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall mount up with wings as, will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. A part of our prayer might look only like waiting. So there are a couple of minutes, or who knows, you know, 30 minutes. We're not doing anything, but we're in the presence of the Lord. We're in the presence of the Lord. Or maybe, you know, we've played some worship music. It's playing in the background. And what are we doing? We are just there. No words, no requests, no praying in the spirit, nothing. Just there. Just quiet. Even this is a form of prayer. It's like the prayer of waiting. You're in the presence of the Lord. You're waiting upon the Lord to minister. And what the way that God ministers, we've seen in Isaiah 40 and verse 31, it says, renew their strength. So what happens in these moments of waiting? It's as if 
God infuses strength. We come in very weak, emotionally weak, mentally weak, physically weak into God's presence. And we're just there. We're waiting. And suddenly, when we come out of that time, we're feeling refreshed emotionally, mentally, physically. What happened? God has put his strength into us. And this could also be like a season. We're always coming into God's presence. We're waiting, waiting, waiting in God's presence, spending time in God's presence, practicing the presence of God. And we receive from practicing the presence of God, waiting in the presence of God. Okay, And uh, uh, we've seen the beauty of it, that we will arise once again. And we will be able to do what God wants us to do. Isaiah 30 and verse 15. It's not there in the notes. You have to flip to it and read it. Uh, Isaiah 30 and verse 15. One of us. For thus said Lord, the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness, and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Okay, so God is saying, in returning and rest, uh, and then in quietness and confidence. So again, that's referring to just being quiet, just waiting, just... Um, you know, sort of calming yourself down and trusting the Lord. So these are also instances of waiting upon the Lord. Quietness, rest. Sometimes we do that here in the Bible college, right? You all are just sitting in the corners, not saying anything, not singing anything. By yourselves, what's happening in that quietness, in that rest in God's presence? Something spiritual is taking place. God is filling you with his strength, his wisdom, his refreshing. And the more we do these things, you know, we'll see over the years, there's a transformation, there's a change, there's a difference. Okay? Uh, and, and so practicing these things in our everyday, everyday life, in our prayer life is very useful. So just sit in God's presence and receive from what the Holy Spirit is doing, the way the Holy Spirit is moving. So that is the prayer of waiting. And the final one here is the prayer of watching. Prayer of watching, watching, think about watchman. Okay. Would you like a watchman who's sleeping in front of your gate? Anyone prefers a watchman like that? Nobody. If there is a watchman appointed, security appointed for that time duration, we are hoping that their eyes are wide open and watching who's coming in, who's going out. That is watching. Watching is, in other words, alertness, alertness. So the prayer of watching is being alert, praying and watching. Jesus told his disciples, we saw that in Gethsemane. I told you, pray for one hour, watch with me but they slept. They're not alert, lazy. Okay? But Jesus was disappointed. He wanted them to be alert. Those were not the times to sleep. There's not the time to sleep. There's the time to be alert. And they didn't do it. Alertness is what watching is all about. Could someone read Isaiah 62, verses 6 to 7? I have, I have set, set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. And give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Mm. Amen. So here, God is telling his people that he has set watchmen on the walls. And in continuation, they shall never hold their peace day or night, meaning they will be alert. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest. Give him no rest. How? Like these watchmen are alert. 
and they don't give god rest meaning they are praying constantly that's what it means watchmen are prayer warriors or people who pray those are the watchmen we are talking about so prayer is also watching so you and i when we pray and we are alert to hear from the lord alert to um understand what god is doing alert to recognize if the enemy is doing certain things so that we can pray against it it's literally like a soldier you're in prayer but you're like a soldier very sensitive to whatever is going on and pray through those prayers pray through those declarations you know do that spiritual warfare hold post hold that position and many times when we talk about the prayer of watching we talk about praying for the city praying for the nation you know uh, there are lots of groups around the nation and around the world where people are praying why because somebody has got to pray to protect the you know the regions the nations and it's when people pray that god will stop the works of the enemy from filtering into the nation so it's prayer of watchfulness prayer of being alert just like a watchman don't allow the things that should not come in allow the things that should come in so that is the prayer of watching okay very briefly so if uh, we have any questions we can uh, discuss if not we can pray and close for today we've gone through quite a number of um, categories of prayer and one can pray in all these ways unto the lord Yes. Yeah. I don't know how to put it exactly. Like you said that you should be praying, asking for things. Uh, when we, as a parent, I know what my child needs. He doesn't mm. have to come and ask me all the time. I want this. I want that. So I give him because I know. So is that 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 isn't it spiritual maturity? Mm -hmm. Like you know sometimes. some things god will i don't ask mm. because i know he will give okay 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 um yeah fine uh good question if when god already knows what we want then uh, why should we ask but see there is this element of faith as well today we read about the blind men when we talked about supplication and we said they cried out to god uh, this is in matthew chapter 20 uh and the lord jesus asked them verse 32 he's saying what will ye that i should do unto you like doesn't he know they are blind what is this question from blind man is coming why to ask the blind man what do you want obviously he needs healing for his eyes but even then jesus wanted them to say what they needed and there is another passage in john chapter 16 verse 24 where jesus before he goes off to the father he says until now you have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full so he is encouraging the believers you ask all right so because god has instructed we obey doesn't he already know he knows but even then he is saying you ask i believe that it's got to do with faith when we ask right it's somewhere connected to our faith that we are expressing that uh, to god keep on asking like hmm. yeah because so, isn't it confident trust we have on him when we ask and leave it mm -hmm. and say okay it's your what you want mm -hmm. let it be so mm -hmm. right um 
so when we have prayed with faith when we have prayed with faith we'll talk about abraham his journey was continuous journey of faith but he came at one point when in his spirit he was clear that what he has asked for or the promise that god has given it's done we see him continuing with thanksgiving so i would say the same thing we ask god how long to ask till we have that confirmation in our spirit god has heard it god has done it now i'm going to give him thanks so till such time keep asking but if we are we don't have that confidence and we are just going on asking maybe it's that we are not praying with faith isn't it yeah so right can i add to that please ma'am uh juliana you want to add to that or oh, joan joan yes yes please um just to um, elaborate on what you were saying um there's a, a chapter and i think it's luke 18 chapter 1 to 8 when the um the widow kept going there was a parable that jesus christ was talking about a widow kept coming persistently um you know um to the judge to um hear her case and that was trying to teach us about this kind of prayer like um the lady was asking um does this mean that we're not matured enough if we keep coming what it is is that these kind of prayers help us to produce fruit like being persistent patience and perseverance so this lady she kept coming to the judge hear my case there's a man that's bothering me there's a man that's um that's taking my stuff help me and she kept coming day by day and what happened the judge got tired and said okay i'm just yeah. gonna answer this woman sure Yes, thank you, Joanne. Thank you for adding to that comment. Uh, and so the point that Joanne is making is there is an instance of uh, persistence in prayer. And when we persist in prayer, it uh, also affects our character when we are patient and when we are seeking God. Uh, and of course, the answer comes through. So that's the other added element to that. Uh, and thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we're going to wrap up with a word of prayer. And I request somebody from the online batch to go ahead and lead in prayer please father god we are grateful for all that you have taught us today our prayer is that you'll help us to be able to live out that in our prayer lives where we have weekend would you revive us once again oh god we want to thank you for nancy for delivering pastor nancy for delivering the teaching so well. We bless her before you, Father. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Juliana. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a great day.